This video for the VITAL syllabus provides an introduction to the topic of landmines, the set of underlying issues that could prevent humanity from reaching the significantly better future that lies within our grasp. If society is able to wisely manage the remarkable technologies that will increase their capability in leaps and bounds over the next few decades, we could reach, by around the date 2040 to 2060, a state with significantly increased human flourishing, a state that can be described as a sustainable superabundance for all. However, en route to that highly desirable future, a number of landmines must be observed and negotiated. Otherwise, they could explode, literally or metaphorically, diverting humanity's trajectory, perhaps as early as 2030, into a catastrophic state that could be called a humanitarian disaster and or an environmental tragedy. A major part of the difference between these two possible outcomes is whether society can sufficiently identify and deal with these landmines in advance before they detonate. This is a controversial topic because many people are inclined to assign only a small probability to these landmines posing real problems. For this reason, it's important to identify in advance what can be called canary signals, measurements to be observed on a regular basis that will provide an objective warning that a possible landmine is becoming increasingly dangerous. As a reminder, the notion of a canary signal refers to the caged birds that human miners used to bring with them as they worked in badly ventilated underground tunnels. Canaries had heightened sensitivity to carbon monoxide and other toxic gases. Shows of distress from these birds alerted many a miner to alter their course quickly, lest they succumb to an otherwise undetectable change in the atmosphere. Becoming engrossed in work without regularly checking the vigour of the canary could prove fatal. As for mining, so also for foresight. If you're super confident about the future, you won't bother checking any canary signals. But that would likely be a big mistake. Indeed, an openness to refutation, a willingness to notice developments that were contrary to your expectation, is a vital aspect of managing contingency, managing risk, and managing opportunity. Accordingly, in this presentation, when each landmine is introduced, some suggested canary signals will be mentioned for it. Later presentations in this series will look at each landmine more closely, exploring their causes and the dangers arising, as well as the solutions that can be applied to reduce these dangers. Speaking of the solutions, each landmine requires its own distinct analysis. However, a number of common themes will emerge as part of the various solutions. A scientific mindset should be applied with careful attention to data. It's important to maintain an open mind rather than becoming dogmatic. The NBIC technologies, nanotech, biotech, infotech, and cognotech, and others provide many opportunities for radical solutions to various landmines. Even so, proactive vigilance will be needed to detect any surprise developments. And in all cases, any temptation to rely entirely on technological progress should be resisted. Human agency will play a significant role too. This involves ideas and actions from multiple diverse viewpoints, assessed and coordinated in a mutually responsible way. In short, 
The solutions will involve taking full advantage of the best that humanity can provide. Now let's turn to the landmines one by one. The vital syllabus highlights 11 of them. The left behinds. Proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, WMDs. Biotech hazards. Infotech hazards. Financial instabilities. Environmental instabilities. And political instabilities. Cancers within society, reason under threat, divided nations, the risk of a Cold War 2.0 and the rush to lethal autonomous weapons, and divided aging. The phrase the left behinds, or sometimes the term precariat is used, refers to the proportion of humanity who feel they are missing out on a fair share of the benefits experienced by other members of society. They perceive themselves and their families and loved ones as having a declining economic well-being, a declining potential for significant improvement in their situation, and a declining social validation they feel that others view them as unimportant, unworthy, and undeserving. As a result, many of the left behinds become victims of despair. Suicides, poor diet and obesity, drug addiction, alcoholism, and a general crisis of lacking a sense of purpose. This adds up in many cases, directly or indirectly, to what are known as deaths of despair. The disparity between the haves and have-nots in some locales poses additional psychic trauma to a society that is already sharply divided and heavily guarded. A small number of the left-behinds, along with others who identify with them, may seek violent revenge, personal notoriety, or some other sort of validation in the face of a world that appears to despise them or neglect them. In consequence, the left behinds can make many of the subsequent landmines worse, such as easy access to weapons of mass destruction, political instability, and the growth of irrationality. But how bad is this problem really? Here are some potential canary signals to watch. The share of national wealth that is in the hands of the richest 1%. Changes in the inflation-adjusted median household income. The proportion of working-age people who have given up looking for paid employment. Ratios of employee-performed tasks to robot-automated tasks and other measures of technological unemployment or technological underemployment. Numbers of deaths of despair or near deaths of despair and other indicators of widespread mental illness. Measures of the risks posed by the spread of weapons of mass destruction include actual uses of chemical or biological weapons, the proliferation of nuclear weapons, instances where suicidal individuals arranged for many other people to die in the act that ended their own lives, plots by terrorist organizations or other groups of disaffected individuals involving the use of WMDs, the availability of 3D printed weapons or other ways to manufacture weapons away from centralized scrutiny, the use of autonomous drones to deliver deadly payloads, and instances of accidental near use or actual use of WMDs, perhaps due to malfunctioning information technology. Moving now to the specific case of biotech hazards, such as pathogens augmented with gain-of-function research, 
Here are some canary signals to watch. Cases where viruses evolve in the wild into more dangerous forms. The emergence of new strains of bacteria that are resistant to existing antibacterial treatments. The frequency of accidental releases of deadly viruses due to failures of biocontainment processes. Cases when genetic editing using methods such as CRISPR have unanticipated detrimental consequences. Open publication of research that would assist people with inflammatory intent to create more deadly versions of existing viruses. And the availability of bio malware as a service on the dark web. As for infotech hazards, here are some measures to monitor. The availability of info malware as a service on the dark web. Measurements of financial losses due to malware attacks. Usage of untraceable money exchange systems by people seeking financial gains from conducting cyber attacks. Assessment of the quality of security in Internet of Things devices in wide usage. Instances of cyber attacks between nation states. Open publication of information that would assist people with inflammatory intent to create more deadly versions of existing info malware. And examples of malware incorporating sophisticated artificial intelligence to attain more dangerous capability. Next on the list of landmines comes financial instabilities. Canary signals here include measurements of national economic distress caused by widespread theft of money by cyber criminals or other hackers. Measurements of national economic distress caused by the instability or rigidity of shared currencies such as the euro. Measurements of dangerous underlying connections between different financial instruments that are nominally independent. The ratio of private debt to the overall size of the economy. Other measures of growing financial instabilities in major economies around the world, such as China. Instances of flash crashes involving automated stock trading systems especially when these crashes lack a clear explanation. And the vulnerability of economies to major problems emerging within cryptocurrencies, such as a failure of cryptocurrency security mechanisms. As for environmental instabilities, some measurements to monitor include New examples of chemicals being discovered to have dangerous side effects many years after having first been introduced to the environment. Harm arising from the distribution of microplastics, organic pollutants, radioactive materials or nanomaterials. Reductions in populations of plants or animals, including insects, that are unexpected and unexplained. Updates on the state of the nine planetary boundaries as being monitored by the Stockholm Resilience Centre. Growing severity of extreme weather as opposed to what could be considered ordinary statistical variation. Instances where ongoing adverse weather is a significant multiplier of other stresses such as increasing pressures on migration or making violent conflict more likely. The approach of climate change feedback cycles to potential tipping points and any limitations that might prevent renewable energy sources from scaling up in the way optimists like to forecast. Moving on from financial instabilities and environmental instabilities, we come to political instabilities, such as democracy being under threat. Canary signals in this case include 
surveys of the degree of importance placed by citizens on their government being fully democratic, surveys of the extent of popular satisfaction with national political systems, measurements of government corruption around the world, use of technology by governments to undermine freedoms which citizens previously took for granted, the extent to which citizens self-censor out of fear of political repercussions, and imprisonment or censoring of political opposition or judges or independent media or academics. The eighth landmine is cancers within society, groups that gain disproportionate power and influence and which pursue goals misaligned with the well-being of society as a whole. If any of these groups grow too large, they can suck the lifeblood out of society. Canary signals to observe include abuses of the monopoly power possessed by dominant corporations, loss of independence of industry regulators, with these bodies falling under the control of forces they are meant to be regulating. Instances where companies diminish overall human flourishing, whilst nevertheless boosting measures such as GDP that are meant to represent the health of the economy. Objective measures of market failure, instances where the self-interested pursuit of objectives by a number of different parties adds up to collective harm rather than the expected mutual benefit. Changes in the inflation-adjusted costs for various medical treatments as an indication of potential dysfunction within the healthcare industry. The dominance of information systems and media platforms by a small number of companies that take key decisions free from democratic oversight. And assessments of the size and influence on society as a whole of various complexes, such as the military industrial complex, the carbon energy industrial complex, the financial industrial complex, the information technology complex, the medical industrial complex, and groups under the control of media barons. The ninth landmine can be seen as a meta landmine. It makes all the other landmines harder to discern, to analyze, and to solve. It's the growth of irrationality, putting reason under threat, in which clear thinking is overwhelmed by confusing and misleading narratives. Measurements worth tracking in this case include instances of real world riots, pogroms, vigilante justice, or even genocide that are whipped up by false reports circulating on social media. Measures of the resources allocated by governments to create false narratives that deliberately foment social chaos, either at home or abroad. The proportion of statements by political leaders that are fact-checked as being misleading or unreliable. Measures of the activities of conspiracy entrepreneurs, that is, people who circulate misleading information not for political reasons, but in order to benefit financially from associated advertising clicks. Assessment of the ability of citizens to think rationally and critically, even about topics where they have strong feelings. Assessments of the general knowledge of citizens, covering basic facts of science, geography, history, and economics. And Assessments of the numeracy of citizens, covering matters such as exponentials and probabilities. The tenth landmine, Divided Nations, is another meta-landmine, since bitter conflicts between rival superpowers can complicate solutions being reached on other matters. Canary signals for growing dysfunction of geopolitics includes measures of the effectiveness of international bodies 
such as the UN, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund and the World Health Organization. Growing Barriers to Freedom of Movement and Freedom of International Trade the adoption of autonomous weapons systems that can operate outside of direct human oversight. The proportion of national funds that are allocated to military purposes. Occasions where relations with obnoxious political leaders. Leaders who degrade human flourishing inside their own country are defended on account of the need to maintain alliances in perceived global conflicts. Measures of inequality between nations, including cases when nations view themselves as being left behind and are ready to embrace desperate measures as a result. And the growth of ideologies or movements that fan criticism of particular nations or ethnicities, encouraging sentiments that are, for example, anti-Chinese, anti-Arab, anti-Jew, anti-Russian or anti-American. Finally, the 11th landmine is divided aging. This is a shorthand expression for growing alarm and hostility toward what some people fear will be an unfair and unequal access provided to forthcoming new medical therapies that significantly extend lifespans. Rather than these forthcoming treatments being welcomed as a humanitarian triumph, they may provoke an adverse psychological backlash, including destruction of research facilities. Canary signals to watch include increases in the longevity gap, the difference in life expectancy between people in rich areas and people in neighbouring poor areas. Indications of a growing two-tier healthcare system, potentially tending, in the extreme, towards something like that portrayed in the dystopian movie Elysium, in which whole body repairs are available to the wealthy inhabitants of a large satellite that orbits the Earth, whereas everyone living on the Earth's surface receives only limited medical treatments. Growing popular hostility to technologies such as genetic modification, body augmentation, life extension, sensory enhancement, or AIs that act as always on personal assistance. The growth of any anti-transhumanist ideologies or movements that uphold supposedly natural modes of living and oppose lifestyles involving supposedly non-natural technological intervention. And media narratives about AI that emphasize detrimental outcomes without highlighting the routes to extremely beneficial outcomes. Thank you for your attention to this vital syllabus presentation, Landmines, an introduction. This presentation has listed more than 70 canary signals. That's a lot to keep monitoring, especially since many of these signals in turn break down into multiple separate items. But the good news is that there are large numbers of people all around the world who can assist in this task. If we practice the principle mentioned earlier of mutual responsibility the task can be cut down in size, and we will be less likely to be taken by surprise by any landmine complications. For more analysis of each of these 11 landmines, along with other hazards that might be added to this list, and for recommendations about solutions to these landmines, look out for other videos in this vital syllabus series.